Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Redwini. It's a journal club, the Dr. Redwini. Yes, very interesting. I have a journal that is hot off the press. It actually didn't really just come out, to be honest. I have an article that is lukewarm, tepid, Kay. off the... Uh, it's August and it came out in March. Okay, I have an article that is now room temperature, yes. was once hot, then warm now. It doesn't matter, don't worry about the temperature of the article. Okay. It's a really interesting article. Okay. From JAMA. JAMA. Okay. The Journal of the American Medical Association. JAMA, which I like to read in my pajamas, I've said before. Um, evaluating the association between low density lipoprotein cholesterol reduction and relative and absolute effects of statin treatment, a systematic uh, review and meta analysis. That's so, so LDLs and statins, not a very controversial topic. It's controversial. <laughs> okay, but it's a good article. It is. A uh, scientific article that was in JAMA. So we thought we would just do a little quick review of it. Yes, and of note, we also have another little video that talks about absolute and relative risk reduction, a number needed to treat, one in meta-analysis that might be worth looking at if you're interested in this kind of terminology. Yeah, because there, that kind of terminology appears a lot, obviously, in scientific studies. Okay, so. So here it is. This is a, this, this is a controversial topic, as you right. mentioned, because um, statins are a class of medication that are used to reduce cholesterol specifically LDL cholesterol, yes. which is thought to play a major role in the development of atherosclerosis, right. which is plaques in the arteries, which can lead to heart attacks, stroke, and death. Right, so the short version is our bodies make the majority of our cholesterol, and then an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase um, is critical. It actually is the rate-limiting step in cholesterol formation, and statins stop it. They are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they stop the production of cholesterol to lower the cholesterol. So I think most everyone would agree that statins are very effective at reducing your cholesterol. They reduce the production of cholesterol. That's yeah. not really a negotiable mm -hmm. thing. Measure it in a blood test. Right, measure in a blood test. But Now, why are two orthopedic surgeons? What do we care so much about statins for? Well, well A, we have patients that have heart attacks and strokes. That's the first right. thing. We care about healthy living. That's why we replace people's joints so they can have better lives. B, but also, the side effects of statins yes. include muscle pains. And orthopedic surgeons were in the business of treating muscle aches and pains. Uh, and C, uh, this orthopedic surgeon has uh, high cholesterol. And so, funny about, about B is that I have had patients before where They've come with a, a musculoskeletal complaint, and I've done x-rays and exam, and I'm like, this, this doesn't make sense. And then we figured out together, and I asked them, I said, are you gonna stat? And they're like, yeah, just started. I'm like, did your symptoms coincide at all? And they're like, yeah. So, like, this is a real thing. Get off statin island, your muscle pain goes away. Yes. No, don't get don't. off your statin, talk about it with your family. Uh, yeah, doctor. critical, actually, do not make a decision based on this video. Yeah. Use it to empower yourself to talk to your family. And personal experience, my, I mean, my lipid profile was like that bad report card in grade five you didn't want to bring home to your parents. Yep. Uh, did you ever have one of those? I didn't, to be yeah. honest, I didn't. I, mean, <laughs> I always had good report cards, but I had two older sisters that always had better report cards. Yeah. So it was tough. That's hard. They were pretty good report cards. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Do you want to talk about that? At some point. Okay. So I was <laughs> on... Uh, I am on a stat. Okay. okay. So that's why this article, for those reasons, we're interested in this article. Okay. So this actually is a meta-analysis like we talked about. So the short answer is it pooled a whole bunch of similar studies to try to get more reliable evidence um, with bigger numbers and longer follow-ups. So what they did is someone did a systematic review where they looked through all of the research papers from 1987 to I think June of 2021, so 34 yep. years, to find high-quality randomized controlled trials that had a minimum of two-year follow-up, comparing the use of statins versus placebos uh, in the not only the lowering of cholesterol, but really looking at outcomes that included all-cause mortality, heart attacks, and strokes. Those are the endpoints. Endpoints that they were looking for. Because okay. some studies look at all sorts of endpoints, so they chose these three. And how many studies did they find in 34 years of research, Paul? Okay, well, they, they initially they found like 175 or something yep. like that. But when they did their systematic review and yes. went through it to say which are good articles that are worth looking into more detail, right. they came up with 21. Right, because the best meta-analysis is at one that has articles that are, or studies that are very, very, very similar. Because mm -hmm. heterogeneity, or when it's slightly different, reduces the reliability of your findings. Right. And they talk about that in this study. Sure. So, 21 articles. So, they pooled all their data to try and see if taking the statin medication 
reduces the chance of all-cause mortality than yes. dying from anything, having a heart attack, and having a stroke. And the secondary analysis they did was to say, well, if your cholesterol is lowered by these statin medications, yes. can we see the, a relationship between the lowering of the cholesterol and these outcomes? Okay. So first, Are you guys still following? Is this too confusing? <laughs> it's, it's Pause and rewind. It's a lot. Okay, so let's first start with the relative risk reduction. So this is a term that compares the difference in the outcome of the treated group versus the non-treated group. So what they found was the relative risk reduction for all-cause mortality was 9%, for heart attack was 29%, and for stroke was 14%. How did you memorize those? That's well done. Well, you know, I would have to refer to that. But anyway, bottom line is those relative risk reductions look good. Yes. Right? That made me feel great. I'm on a statin. I feel good because I've reduced my risk by 19% and 12%, yes. Yes. whatever. Good numbers. Yeah. Okay. And then they looked a little closer at what's called the absolute risk reduction. So essentially the actual number of people who had reduced events and that number went down a little bit. So it went to 0.8% for all-cause mortality, 1.3% for heart attack, and 2.4% for stroke. So the absolute risk reduction is not that great, modest as they described it. Yes. Now what, what that means is that the number of people you need to treat with the statin medication is closely related to the absolute risk reduction and not the relative risk reduction. So it turns out you have to treat like I don't know, 70 people? One of them, I think it said 77 people had to be on statins for 4.4 years to stop one heart attack. So that is not as uh, engaging a number as those initial relative risk reductions. Right. So the criticism too was that a lot of the previous studies didn't present the absolute risk reduction. They right. just presented the relative risk reduction, right. which can be misleading because then patients and prescribers might think, well, the effect is so great because yeah. the relative risk reduction is so high. I want to reduce my heart attack risk by 30%. Yeah, everybody does. Sure. But the absolute risk reduction, so really the chances, how much was the chance of a heart attack reduced was less than 1%. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's important to look at both those risk reductions when making a decision Right. to treat someone with something. Right. So, and so, we'll, so what some of the conclusions, because obviously um, there's uh, a lot of discussion about this paper and the authors themselves said, listen, the studies weren't all exactly the same, so there is a little bit of what's called heterogeneity in the data, so that increases the potential for the results to not be quite as definitive as, as they would claim, and, and they acknowledge this. Yeah. And other people certainly brought this up as well. And the other thing they did, well, they, they looked at their, you know, their secondary analysis where they said, well, let's look at the LDL numbers, right. okay, those low density lipoprotein cholesterol numbers, right. and let's see the ones that were reduced on the statin, let's see if we can find a correlation uh, between the reduction of LDL and those endpoints of all-cause mortality, heart attack and stroke, and they couldn't show a very good correlation. So it doesn't mean there isn't a correlation, right. but they couldn't show it from right. the data they have. And so you would think if there was a strong correlation, they'd be able to show it. Uh, but they, they couldn't show a, a significant correlation, a, a strong or significant correlation. And what this may mean, like we talked about in some of our other videos, particularly the one about absolute relative risk reduction, is that the, uh, there are other associated risk factors and the prevalence of the disease predict the effect of the treatment. So there are certain populations that we can almost certainly say have significant benefit mm -hmm. and those numbers would be a lot higher mm -hmm. if we treated them with statins. Whereas someone that maybe is healthy, has no family history, has no other risk factors, eats healthy exercises, but has elevated LDL, maybe that person mm -hmm. is someone who's not gonna benefit from a statin. And in the comments, a lot of people said, well, listen, I have high LDL, but I've had a calcium score and I've had an angiogram and everything's perfect. Maybe I don't need to take a statin. And maybe you don't. That's what, that's what we're trying to tease out is yeah. who is the group that benefits the most from this type of medication? Okay. And so from this study, yeah. I got four main points to share with everybody. One, there's a difference between absolute risk reduction and relative risk reduction. Critical. And, and, in, and in, the, in the case of the statins, that, that difference is significant. So you should keep that in mind. Two, they couldn't really show a correlation between the number, the cholesterol number and the outcomes. Uh, in this meta-analysis. Three, uh, all those studies that are out there are very heterogeneous, as Dr. Weening said, so they're looking at different outcomes and different endpoints. It's not um, very well organized from one study to the other where everyone's looking for the same thing. Right. It makes it difficult to do a meta-analysis. 
Uh, and four, a lot of those studies uh, that are out there that, are that people use to say, yes, we should be putting people on statins, have composite endpoints, which include things like, oh, did you have a cardiac revascularization procedure? Right. Were you hospitalized? Those are softer endpoints um, as opposed to death, heart attack, stroke. Right. So those are the four main take-home messages I got from this. So what should, what should you do if you're on a statin? Keep taking it. Don't stop yeah. your statin based on what you're seeing us say. Yeah. But what should you do is talk to your family doc or your right. healthcare provider about it before yes. going on a statin or if you're on a statin and you have concerns, really you want to discuss it with them. We will always advocate healthy eating and exercise for, to be honest, almost any medical condition to start. Um, some medication is necessary. Some medication is very successful at treating and preventing disease. Oh, yeah. Like, it's oh. undeniable as much as people loathe big pharmaceuticals. Oh, yeah. Pharmaceutical companies do improve people's yeah. lives and save people's lives. They are not perfect yeah. or uh, yeah. are not infallible, and neither are doctors. So, um, everything is with the grain of salt, not too much salt because we don't want your blood pressure to go yeah. up. Um, but, I mean, I'm in, I might be in the same boat as you are with sure. high cholesterol. I'm on a statin personally and I'm going to continue taking it, but I am going to discuss it with my family doc. And, and this hey. is an evolving area of research. So mm -hmm. what causes a plaque is not just cholesterol, it's inflammation, it's insulin resistance, it's so many other factors that it's hard just to tease one out. And I think historically it's maybe been oversimplified and that's what's probably got us here. That's it. All, All right. right. Journal club. Journal Done. club. Now you feel educated. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And share it with someone who you know is on a statin and may be interested in it. Yeah. Uh, and remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.